Why is that our weak link, right? Is there excessive loading in other areas? Is there increased tension in other areas? Is there ligament laxity upstream and downstream that is resulting in the patellar tendon taking more load than it should? All right, everybody, another episode of Daily Doc Talk. I don't even know what day we're on here, but we are going strong. I hope you all are enjoying and getting value out of this kind of more longer form content. So what I want to talk about today is this concept that in the grand scheme of things, the places that people get these injuries and more so the chronic degenerative type injuries, not the acute traumatic type injuries, although there is a little bit that will play into those, but the places that people tend to get chronic degenerative changes and pain are generally the weak areas in fascial chains, kinetic links, connections throughout our body. So we have these different connections, the ligaments, can connect with different fascial planes, which then can connect with muscles and tendons. And we have all of these different connections that can be found in the cadavers, right? You can actually uh, have these pieces that are connected. So an example is a portion of your hamstring muscles. It actually fascially attaches to the sacrotuberous ligament, which is a ligament that is found in the low back which that then fascially connects with the thoracolumbar fascia. And you can actually get that extending all the way up to the base of the occiput. So your hamstrings and actually even further down in the foot can connect fascially all the way up to the head. And so the reason we have this is because it actually provides a more efficient system for locomotion, for moving around, for doing the things that we need to do in life, whether that's lifting things, moving things, just walking around, running, whatever it is. This is a biotensegrity model of human movement. And so in these fascial chains, I, I kind of tend to think of these like a chain link fence, okay? You've got these different connections. And at some point, if something is to break in a chain link fence, what's gonna break? Well, it's definitely not going to be the strongest linkage. It's going to be the weakest linkage. And so this is something that I tend to think about a lot when I'm trying to evaluate somebody for, okay, we've got this problem. Let's say we've got a patellar tendinopathy, okay? We've got some tendinopathy or some tendon changes of the patellar tendon, which is connecting the, basically the kneecap down to the tibia. And we say, okay, well, let's address that. Let's, you know, because we've hit a certain point where we have tendon degeneration and we now have pain. So let's address that. That's where the injections can come into play. Um, obviously all the physical therapy things, eccentric loading, some scraping over that area to stimulate fibroblasts, all those things to treat that. But then the one step further is, well, why was that there, right? And now if somebody had a, you know, an injury, they were in a car accident, they fell, they damaged something, then that, you know, yes, that could still be a weak area and we still need to look upstream and downstream. But when I'm more so talking about these chronic degenerative things where somebody maybe is just, you know, an avid basketball player and over 20, 30 years, this has developed. Well, then we start to look at, okay, well, what connects fascially to the patellar tendon? We've got obviously the quadriceps tendon, which then travels up the rectus femoris, which then attaches to the ASIS. And then from the ASIS, you actually have a multitude of different uh, fascial connections that can occur but if we continue up uh, cephalad or upwards uh, towards the head we get into the uh, rectus abdominis things like that and so we start to step back to evaluate okay well you've got this problem here but what about all this chain of myofascia here what about all the chain of myofascia down here what is going on with these areas and also why is the patellar tendon in this example why is that our weak link right is there excessive loading in other areas? Is there increased tension in other areas? Is there ligament laxity upstream and downstream that is resulting in the patellar tendon taking more load than it should? Now, this is a really, really nuanced way of assessing 
and sometimes we're right, sometimes we're wrong. I also think that this is a relatively newer way to try to think about injury prevention and things like that, or these myofascial connections or these myofascial meridians, as Tom Myers has put forward. And so these are just things that I am just talking out here because I'm, I'm hoping that maybe this helps somebody who is going through treatment and they're like, well, why? does X muscle or X tendon or X ligament continue to get injured? And what can we do about that long-term, right? From an injection standpoint, from a physical medicine slash physical therapy standpoint, which includes mobility, strength and conditioning, all those types of things. Think upstream and downstream. You can also start to educate yourself. There's a book online, the Anatomy Trains book that could help give some insight into uh, you know, what might be going on. You can start to formulate these things yourself and think about these things and incorporate these things into how you move, how you exercise, all those things. So just remember that one of the potential things that can occur is that when you have pain and degeneration in an area, that that could actually be the weak link in a myofascial chain, hence why it is now painful, hence why it now has some degeneration. And from there, you want to maybe think about, well, why is this the weak link? From there, you can start to address the symptoms, which is the degeneration and the pain, but then also think of what can we do to prevent this from continuing to occur in the future? Just some thoughts.